Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there, and a special thanks to all the women out there who have successfully led you through your journey of fatherhood. You could not have done it without them. <laughs> My name is John Russell, and I'll be presenting the third installment of the Invite component of Invite, Welcome, Connect. Um, the past two weeks, we've heard presentations on why we invite, how we invite. Today's presentation will deal with the actual conversations you may encounter as you deal with resistance. And as we learned last week from Babs, going all caveman on somebody and dragging them down Lee Street by their hair is not how we deal with resistance. Let me start by saying that the, this phase of invite process really starts with listening and not talking. When I was working in Chicago several years ago, one of my employees made the observation that men and women sometimes have trouble communicating. She stated that as soon as a woman starts talking, a man stops listening and immediately starts formulating a response. I immediately said to her, that's not correct. So I guess I proved her right. One of the principles in Stephen Covey's work, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, is seek first to understand, then be understood. I think this is a critical practice in this third step of invite because you have to be able to understand what someone's point of view is, why they feel the way that they feel, or why they feel the way about the church that they do, before you can start to helpfully bring them back to the fold. One of the key things to remember about inviting is that you will not get everybody to come to our church, and that's okay. As we heard in the gospel today, the disciples didn't bat a thousand. You're not expected to either. So don't put too much pressure on yourself. When you're inviting someone to St. James, you may hear, I was hurt by the church in the past, or I had a deeply negative experience in the past. In this situation, your first step would be to try and find out why they feel that way, what happened to them. If your relationship with that individual is strong, they might be open. They might be willing to tell you what occurred that makes them feel that way. If your relationship is not particularly strong, they may not want to share that with you. Just back away. Give them some time. Give them some room. Assure them that you and Christ will always be at St. James to welcome them whenever they are ready to come. People may express to you the opinion that they don't trust the church any longer or that they don't trust traditional churches. Again, find out why. Why don't you trust the church? What did it do to you? Or what did people within the church do to you? Churches have had a reputation of having, unfortunately, very bad people do very bad things to people. But the church didn't do it to them. God didn't do it to them. Christ didn't do it to them. It was people that did it to them. So the church is still solid. The church is still here. And the church is here to welcome people to um, to come and worship as they choose. St. James is physically a warm and welcoming environment. We are not a, we're not a mega church. We're not a grandiose, um, op opulent facility. We're more intimate, more family oriented, more community oriented. People sometimes don't trust the church because they don't understand where all the money goes. We're an open book. Our finance meeting is open to anybody who wants to, who wants to come and find out where we spend our money. Additionally, you may hear from people, I don't need to go to church anymore. I'm secure in my faith and my spiritual relationship with God. I say to those people, God bless you, because that's a great place to be. However, you can't, your, your, your spiritual relationship with God cannot exist in a vacuum. As Matthew stated, for, there, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Perhaps those people that feel that they, are, they have a strong relationship with God or they are very spiritual, maybe they don't need the traditional church, but there are places where they can be of great help. Grief support, ECW, Stevens Ministries. We have a, a variety of different ministries within St. James where people can express their spirituality, they can express their love of God without necessarily just becoming a member of our church. 
inviting people is always going to be difficult. It's much easier if you know your, if you know your audience and can have a simple, pleasant conversation with them. When Nancy and I first moved into the plantation, everybody was building houses. We were meeting all pe people for the first time. So it was very simple to find out who was, who was an Episcopalian, who wasn't, who was looking for a church, who wasn't. And it was very easy to invite those people. And successfully, we invited several people who became members of this church. If, once you get past the low-hanging fruit, it gets a little bit more difficult. It gets a little bit more challenging. Make it easy on yourself. Go for the low-hanging fruit initially. Try those, those people that you're comfortable with, those people that might just, just need a little nudge to go in the direction of St. James. Don't start with the person that's going to be an incredibly difficult journey and perhaps an unsuccessful one. One thing I've learned about St. James is this is a very caring and giving environment. It's a very caring and giving parish. Been here, member here for since 2004 um, and have been very pleased with our relationship within this church, our relationship with Christ in this church, and I hope that we are able to bring more people to St. James. Again, happy Father's Day, everybody.